Uh, you know, unfortunately, on every episode of Top Shot, someone has to go home. Let's watch a, a clip from last night's show. Amanda, you hit one target. Mark, you hit three targets. Congratulations. Come get your gift card to Bass Pro Shops. You passed your first test. Thank you, sir. To rejoin your team. Thank you. Amanda, unfortunately, you have fired your last shot. You've officially been eliminated from Top Shot. I'll give you a moment to say goodbye to these guys, and you can head on out. All right. I'm the first contestant off of Top Shot, but I feel like a badass that I made it here in the first place. Although it sucks to send a member of our team home, that's the nature of the beast. We know that there's 16 competitors that start this thing, and there's only going to be one going home with the money. There you go. Okay. Congratulations. All right, thank you. Thanks, man. And Amanda Hart, a nurse, real estate agent, and uh, yeah, I'll say it, badass, joining us here on Cam and Company tonight. Amanda, how you doing? I, well, you, I'm a badass. How, how, <laughs> what are you doing? Thank you so much for coming on the program tonight. It's good talking to you. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so we just saw the uh, the, the the parting shot. Um, but tell us, I, I guess, before we get into specifics about last night's program, just tell us overall. I mean, what was it like to be a contestant on this on this show? It was an honor to be on the show. I mean, Colby introduces us as some of the 16 most skilled marksmen in, in the world or the country, and that's quite a compliment in and of itself, no matter how far you make it. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, the some of the things that you guys had to do uh, in this episode last night, I mean, including the elimination challenge, which was just sick, uh, I, I, mean, yeah. I mean, seriously, you guys are, uh, help me out here, you're firing, uh, you've got 10 targets, yeah, and you're using a Winchester 73, mm-hmm. uh, repeating rifle, and you're riding on a stagecoach, yeah? Yeah, on a stagecoach, on a really, really <laughs> rutted out dirt road, uh, and it was... I felt that that was more a test of my ability to muscle a gun and hold it and keep my sight picture Mm -hmm. than than actual shooting skill. I mean, I I was bouncing so incredibly hard because go figure a stagecoach doesn't exactly (laughs) have the best shock built into it. So that seems like that, that, that challenge was more based on who can hold that gun hard enough and make a sight picture and pull that trigger. I, you know, it was it was just incredible to watch, and I uh, I, I bow to you. I mean, you hit your first shot. Yeah. Uh, I I think I, I could have had a hundred rounds. I could have had a hundred targets, and I don't think that I uh, I, I could have done uh, as well as you did, or as well as your uh, uh, team member uh, Mark Schneider did. That that just looked intimidating. Yeah, it was hard. When I saw the stagecoach pull up, I laughed. I was like, "Cool, I can do that." But I was. <laughs> I was coming out of my practice round where we had been sitting on a stationary bench, and I had just done amazing. So I felt extremely confident. I was like, I can do this. I, I just It didn't cross my mind all the movement that was going to be involved. I would be moving. The buggy would actually be moving forward. The targets themselves are moving. So there were a lot of moving parts to that challenge. It was much, much more difficult than I gave it credit for. Well, you know, let me tell you, the difficulty came through uh, on TV. So let's talk a little bit about you, Amanda. I'm curious, what made you – well, first of all, let's talk about your background a little bit. How long have you been shooting? I've only been shooting for four years. I consider myself still a new shooter. Wow. How did you pick it up? Uh, (laughs) I had had a couple opportunities to shoot firearms growing up um, just through friends, and I always really enjoyed it. And I said, you know, I'd really like to own a gun one day. So one of the things, you kind of finally come to a point in your life, and you're like, okay, well, Now's the time because waiting, you know, what am I waiting on? So I called an indoor firing range that is local to me and said, I want to shoot a gun. And they said, come on down. And I did. And they put a gun in my hand. And it has absolutely been a huge part of my life ever since. That's awesome. So this is this was something that you decided on your own you wanted to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. And, and now you're shooting competitively? 
I am. I am. I'm focusing on USPSA style shooting. Um, open to other disciplines, but that that one really turns me on. I love the idea of moving while shooting at the same time. I re- that took a lot mentally from me to go. It's okay to run and shoot a gun at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> the USPCA, the uh, U.S. Practical Shooting Association. For for people who aren't familiar with that, what 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 what's the difference between, let's say, practical shooting and what we think of, you know, when we when we uh, just go to the range? Um, well, that's actually a lot of what I have been doing. My first three years of shooting are completely self-taught. Uh, if I learned it, it's because I read it on the internet or ask the guy at the range, um, I, YouTube, man, YouTube's amazing. It's how I learned how to take apart my Glock. <laughs> but, um, I mean, completely self-taught. And, and a lot of that is just you have one target, maybe two targets. It's more bullseye-style shooting mm-hmm. if you're using a pistol, where the practical shooting, you've got a certain number of targets set up. And it's a whole course of fire. You start at a specified point. You can wear three, four, five extra magazines. And depends what classification you're shooting, how many how many uh, rounds the mags can hold. And that buzzer goes off, and it is you in that course. You break it down however you think it needs to be broken down. Generally, two rounds per target. You engage them how you think they need to be engaged. You drop and reload magazines when it makes sense to you. So there's a lot of autonomy in that style of shooting, and I, I really like that. Very cool. Uh, now, have you inspired uh, other women in, in your area to uh, to take up shooting? I really have. Um, I don't fit any kind of stereotype of a woman that would like to shoot a firearm. Nine times out of ten, people are absolutely shocked that I would even say the word gun, more or less own a bunch of them and be very competent in handling them. Yeah. And I think that that really inspires a lot of women to kind of reach out and go, well, I've always kind of thought I'd like a gun. Maybe I'll try it too. So I love that aspect of it. That's very cool. And so what made you decide that that you wanted to try to compete on Top Shot? I tend to always push myself beyond what I think I can actually achieve. It's just kind of been part of my life forever. And Top Shot seemed unachievable. So, of course, naturally I applied for it. (laughs) Were you, uh, so so did you, did you think, well, I'm going to, of course I'm going to get in. Uh, Or or were you shocked when uh, you learned that you were going to be on the show? No, I really didn't think I'd get in. I sent in my application and thought, you know, Nothing gained, nothing lost. Mm-hmm. I, I sent in an application. And about six months later, I heard back from them, and we started going back and forth on the different materials they needed from me. And then when they took a group of us out to L.A. to, you know, really interview us, they took us to the range, assessed our firing skills and whatnot. And it turned out I shot better than half of the people there, which was, you know, very encouraging to me. So yeah. We all came home, and sat and waited to hear back from them, and I ended up being one of the 16 they wanted for season three. That's so cool. So what do you what do you hope to get uh, out of your experience on Top Shot? What do you hope to do with this? This experience has really rekindled a lot of my drive and motivation and desire. It's reminded me to don't stop myself. Don't set my goals too low. See something that interests me, and even if it seems completely unattainable, go for it. The worst, the worst thing that's going to happen is failure, and failure hurts. And nobody wants to be the first loser, and it's kind of embarrassing. But so what? I tried, and that's awesome. So I feel like I've totally been rejuvenated with my with my drive. Well, listen, I, I think it's I think what you've done is fantastic. I mean, you know, I think it really is an accomplishment. Uh, just to get on the show oh. uh, in the first place, and you know, I, I've watched enough Top Shot uh, over the, uh, the the course of the uh, first two seasons to know that, you know, really the the, the difference in terms of the uh, competence or you know the marksmanship of of all of the competitors is so slight 
uh, that you know any given challenge, any given day, you're you're gonna get. Uh, really a level playing field. So, you know, if, if uh, the challenges have been a little bit different, who knows how last night's episode would have turned out. But uh, yeah. I, I think you've inspired a lot of people, Amanda. I really do. Good. But, you, and you know what? That means the world to me. And for that reason, it's worth it. Well, listen, Amanda, thank you for coming on the program. I hope we can talk to you again at uh, some point in the future. And best of luck to you as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me.